<laughs> Give the media team a hand. <laughs> Bunch of nuts. Some would say, Lord, they did that in church. Well, welcome to one. <laughs> we, uh, and sorry we couldn't use some of you, I know. I was wondering, sitting there, I'm like, are they reading the Word? Some of these ladies going, yeah, amen. <laughs> like, are they even reading the Word? It's got a message to it, you know, all right? <laughs> all right, I'll get to that in just a moment. I, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, God always just, I, I've never been known the guy to just go by script. I, I uh, just go with the flow as the Spirit leads. I want to say two or three things. Um, first of all, we, we are glad that you're here, and we are free in this house. We want you to worship in spirit and truth. Uh, the flowers throughout the, the building as you come in and here on stage, you know, we're, we're not a, a flower church per se. That's not good or bad in making that statement. But they're here in, in memory of uh, Teresa Manning, and uh, she went on to be with the Lord. And so her family is here today, and, and we say we love you, and we're, 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 you know, thankful for the flowers. We're thankful, thankful for the beauty that she put in our lives for the time that we got to share uh, with her and so on and so forth. And so we're very, very, very uh, honored to uh, be a part of what God is going to do in a new new way in their lives uh um, and so we're we wanted to mention that this morning i also um i want to take just a moment and and say uh brooks is in the house this morning so give the lord a hand amen <laughs> some, some of you are going uh what yeah we've been praying a long time and and still pray for him and still praying uh for him but uh, uh it's kind of been a long uh not to quote the Grateful Dead, but uh, been a long, strange trip, and so uh, we're glad that you're in the house this morning, son. I uh, admire you and uh, pray for you every day, okay? And we're glad all, all of you are here, and, and uh, we're excited about what God is doing, and I wanted to take one, one more opportunity, and I'll do this until the Lord tells me to do something different. Uh, it, did he just completely leave the building? Uh, I think he, the band usually goes out and catches their breath and freshens up. Uh, the, the jack leg on the guitar right over here. Corey, you in, you're not in here, are you? He's going, everybody looking around going, where's Corey? Uh, Corey is, uh, if you didn't get a letter from him, he is uh, raising money to uh, go to uh, Rwanda, I believe is where uh, he's traveling with a group of, of folks. And, and uh, so I just, I just wanted to make you aware of him, but he is that, that jack leg that usually is g getting down over here, cutting a rug, you know, uh, literally. Um, and so I want you to uh, pray for him. I'm not asking you for money. We, we just want God to lead, but uh, I'm excited for him. Our first missionary is already on the field over in Greece. Uh, uh, Brandon is over there. He texts me this week, Brandon Hardy. Uh, he, you know, of course, the Navy thinks they have him, but really we know that the Lord is using him over there. So uh, he texts and said, as long as he can have, get on Wi-Fi, he can text and send out messages like So I want you to pray for these guys, but seriously, Brandon, any, anytime anybody's been for foreign mission, you know that it, it takes uh, a great deal of, of sacrifice, and uh, so we want to rally around him and, and, and most of all pray for him, pray for safety, pray for his heart to be prepared and the people's heart that he will go and minister to to be prepared. There's a multitude of other things. Remember our children's camp is coming up. I cannot stress the importance of getting your kids involved. We want to offer an alternative to the vacation Bible schools that are out there. There's nothing wrong with it. There he is. There's Corey. Look at that cute guy right there. Whoop, whoop. All right, that's the guy right there that uh, I was just talking about. There he is. That's my man. All right, so and, and you, so you support him in prayer as he's going on a foreign mission trip, but also if you have the ability to sacrificially give, man, bless him, all right? And I promise you, you won't outgive God. I promise you that, okay? All right, so with all of that, I'll go back to the children's thing. I want you to be sure that you're getting your kids plugged in there and, and know that all those things are available to you uh, and for you. Also, I'm excited to, uh, I don't know what's going on. We might have to be breaking out a little bit of revival here. We've got some more nerdy folk up in the house here. It's good to have Zeph and good friends of mine. Uh, and I see we got it. We got the church covered here, nearly folk spread out here. So, all right. You like the video intro? I'm excited to uh, start Macho Men. It'll be like the women's series, Cow and the Girls. It, it will be directed out of out of men's lives in the Bible, but it'll be a message for everybody. So don't don't get your hopes up, ladies, that you're gonna elbow your husband the whole time. Now you might, okay? You might, or your boyfriend, you might. But I want you to listen with your heart, okay? I, I promise you that as God leads me. I, I, I will always try to speak a message that, first of all, is relevant in my life, that God's working on me, and then it'll share, and I'll share it with everybody. So that's just how I operate, okay? And uh, it is really cool to know that, yes, I've got an education. I know you can't tell that, but it's, it's really cool, no matter what, that the Holy Spirit is always leading. And when I say that, I say it with this. I, some of you, I posted this morning, uh, I, had a, I had a message, I gave the media team, we usually give them the text and the outline, uh, even if it's last minute, uh, so they can get it plugged in and ready to go, and I was going to preach on lingering lot, 
uh, and I may do that uh, sometime in the future, maybe next week. God woke me up early, early this morning and, and uh, began to, to read and listen to some, some preaching myself, just a spirit, just churning and a thickness in the air and God just completely <laughs> gave me a completely new message and fresh and it was for me and so I want to share my heart this morning. I, I want to talk to you on the subject of refusing to settle. If you have your Bible or your smartphone or whatever you carry with you, I want you to turn to Genesis 29 and I want to specifically look at verse 20. This is the story of Jacob marrying Leah first and then Rachel, but he was after Rachel to start with. Laban tricked him, all right? Uh, it, there's a lot of angles you can preach this, and it'd be the truth, uh, because uh, Jacob was a trickster himself. Now you reap what you sow, and he's fixing to get tricked himself. I want you to look in Genesis 29, verse 20. The verse will be on the screen if you do not have a Bible with you or a smartphone or access to that. And again, I want to talk to you this morning about refusing to settle. You with me? Say amen. amen. I'm excited, too. Let me see. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I get to go see my brother today. It's the first time I've got to talk to him in, in a few weeks. He gets visitors today, and so I'm excited. No, he's not in prison. <laughs> uh, I'm, ex I'm excited, so, so I'm really excited to go see my brother this afternoon. All right, refusing to settle. Genesis 29, verse 20. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Yeah, baby, here we go. Buckle up. You ready? Because we'll take off, all right? So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel. Now, I promise you, you're going, if you don't know the story, and you're a newcomer or anything like that, you're going, what? I promise you I'll set it in context, okay? All right? So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seem like only a few days to him because of his love for her. If you underline in your Bible, and I, I, I recommend you get a Bible that you can write in or highlight if you have a smartphone, I want you to, to highlight they seem like only a few days. It is amazing to me that seven years seem like only a few days, because the last time I checked, seven years is seven years, right? I mean, the last time I checked, and so, but it says it seemed as though it was very short-lived. It didn't matter. Now, in context, let me set the story. I already give you a little bit of it. Uh, here he finds who he thinks is going to be his wife. Uh, I don't know what he would see in Rachel, but he would see the most beautiful, drop-dead gorgeous woman that he'd ever seen in his entire life, and it was love at first sight. He, he, he had to have her. It was, it was a, a divine appointment. And so customary, he goes to her dad, and, and Laban, he, he, he asks, you know, uh, I want your daughter in marriage and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just paraphrasing to get to my message because I'm hot hearted and ready to preach. And so the story goes, he said, and it was customary in that day that you had to, to uh, uh, offer a dowry or a bounty, excuse me, for, for the wife uh, because they would be losing a, a really a hand on the farm and, and, and the help around the house. So it was kind of, you, what you go, he says, so work seven years for me and I will give you Rachel. Now, we're also introducing the text to her older sister, Leah. Now, what happens is, you know the story, right? And if you do, just sound like it's the first time you've heard it, okay? All right, just, just smile real big and say, yeah, okay, yeah, good. So what happens is, he worked seven years. That's the reason I brought that, that one verse out, not out of context, but I want to highlight some things about this. He works his seven years. He farms, he works. And I'm not talking about a desk job. I'm talking about he worked, okay? He worked for seven years. And then on the night he's supposed to get his bride that he, that he loved, the, the woman that God had designed for him, that he had to have, he, he was supposed to get her that night. Well, he, Laban tricked him. And he sent in, now you say, well, uh, how is that possible? Well, it's customary that they would veil them and send them in by night. Uh, it's also a kind of a topology for the sin uh, Jacob was paying for, the darkness. It was done at night. Uh, so on and so forth, but since, you know, uh, and, and they spend the night together, and we'll keep it PG, and, uh, and so he gets up and goes, oh, wait a minute, that is not who I work for. What? So, so what's happened here? And so he goes back to him, and, and, and Laban, the father, he says, you know, he's tricked him. He says, listen, I, I want Rachel, and, and so he says to him, all right, you, you work seven more years, and then I will give you Rachel. And it's interesting to me that in those first seven years, and even in the process of him being tricked through this, that he was not willing, he refused to settle. Now let me give you a few things here. Let, let me give you the, the first of two major points I want to make this morning as we have time together. And I'll, I'll do them very quickly. Jacob didn't settle for Leah. 
It would have been, it, it, it was a natural thing. Now, did he marry? Yes, he married her, okay? Did he have children? Yes, and it would start a war of jealousy for centuries, okay? The Moabites and the Amorites would come out of this. I mean, it was, it, it's, it's crazy how the story unfolds. I mean, it is crazy. It is, it's just crazy all the different things that, that, that spark out of all of this from the sin, okay, that he had tricked early in his life. And so he, he didn't settle for Leah. Now, what's interesting, you with me, say amen. What's well, interesting, if you do a word study, the, the name Leah, it, it, it means, now watch this, okay? It means wild cow. Now, I don't know how she looked. I'm just telling you what the Hebrew name means right there, okay? It, it, don't, look, don't look at me like that, ladies, all right? I'm telling you, I'm just I'm rightly dividing the word of truth. It, it means wild cow. It, it, it talks about her eyes. If you read the text, she, she didn't look quite as bright-eyed as Rachel. Uh, somebody said she might have had a lazy eye. I heard one preacher, I think Jensen Franklin, was talking the other day about how uh, she might have been cross-eyed. I, I don't know, but I know what the word means there. It literally means wild cow. So he wakes up <laughs> with wild cow. Now, I, I could preach all afternoon right there because some of you... <laughs> I'll just leave that alone. I can preach right there. You know, you, you thought one thing and ended up like, whoa, wait a minute. What was that? <laughs> that is not what it appeared to be, okay? And so, so Leah is wild cow. He was not willing to settle for the wild cow. I'm going to leave that phrase alone. <laughs> here's, here's the challenge that I got for you. I want you to listen. Put your, put your listening heart on, okay? All right? You see, it, it's so relevant in our life that we're so quick to just settle. Now, it may not be in a situation like this, but think about it in the 21st century, how we're so quick to just settle. We, and here's the thing. It would have been easy for him to just settle for Leah. Why? Because it was convenient. It had already been done. It had already taken place, and it was just convenient. So often in our lives, I believe, if we're not careful, we'll live our lives thinking that, listen, to be a real man or a real woman of God, that, that listen, along the way, we get ourselves into situations and, and we just end up settling because it's convenient. It's just easy to do that. It's just convenient. It's right here in front of us. You ever done that? Matter of fact, I, I have eight things. You, you, you following me? I'm just being real with you. I have eight things that were on the bar that just was convenient to eat. And I'm telling you, seconds after I ate that, I wish I had not put that down my gullet. But because it was convenient, I went ahead and helped myself. So often we do that in our walk with the Lord. We go this way and we own this journey and it just seems convenient. And here's the thing. The convenient things normally are the wild cows of this world. Y'all all right? I'm going to go to preach it in a moment. Just because it's easy, just because it's convenient. See, he, he could have just settled for Leah because it was convenient and it was cheaper. He could have just worked the seven years. You following me? I, I give you the whole thing there. He, he could have just worked the seven years. So, man, I've had enough. I've done my seven years. Okay, she is not Rachel. She's already here. And it's cheap. It's done. It's over with. So often in our lives, we forfeit the best God has for us because we want to just settle for that which is convenient or that which is cheaper. And let me tell you something. If it is convenient and it is cheap, it is normally not worth having. Amen? So to be strong does not mean that you are a strong man or a macho man because it is the convenient thing to do. And trust me, I know what I'm preaching this morning. I have done things and made decisions out of the convenience of life. It just seemed like the right thing to do. You ever had that said? You ever said that to yourself? It just seemed like the right thing to do. And all along, after you did what you thought was right, all hell broke loose. And war and jealousy would go for years. He was not willing to settle for Leah. He was not willing to settle for the convenient, for the cheap. He was not willing to settle for the faster. It was cheap. It was convenient. And his time had already been done. We live in a society that says, I want it now. I've told you this before. It is so funny with Addison. If we watch something on, and we do it ourselves, we found ourselves just the other night trying to fast forward something. We're so used to DVR. We're so used to whatever you call TiVo or whatever you got. We got UVerse. We're so used to the recording and getting right through the commercial. I couldn't tell you the last commercial that we've watched. We just go right through it. When you watch regular TV, she's like, fast forward that. You can't. It's real time. 
We get so inundated with a society that says, I want it now. We have bosses that lord over us and say, hey, I want it like yesterday. They want it cheap, they want it faster, and they want it easy. And if you live your life, now I, I'm going to preach it, okay? I haven't got to the main point yet, but I want you, I, the ship is taking off, baby. <laughs> if, you just settle, if you just settle in for the cheap, and for the easy and for the convenient, you will always end up with the wild cows of life. You understand me? You will always, always end up with that which is not the best and not the most that God had intended for you. And you'll find yourself 30 years down the road still just settling. We've got grown men and women that still just settle. They never were exposed to somebody that was willing to dig their heels in and go the extra mile and work the overtime and pull the weight and accept responsibility and stand up with a backbone and say, yes, I made the mistake. Yes, I've been deceived. Yes, I've got tricked. But I will not settle for the Leahs of this world. I will not settle for the wild cows when I know God has better for me. You understand me? We do it across the board. We do it across the board. We do it in our family. We do it in our jobs. We do it, man. We do it right in church. We just settle. We want to go somewhere where they will tickle our ears and pat us on the back. We want to go somewhere where they know our name and they remember our birthday and they celebrate every little toenail that you get, every little instant, every little thing. that We want to go somewhere that's family-friendly and safe. You all right? And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be about community or it's just the flip side. We go somewhere because it's convenient, it's easy, and it's cheap, and I'm not belittling any size of a church, but it could be a large church. You know what I found out when I was going through my desert spell a couple years ago it's easy to hide in a large church you can sit on the back row that's no reference here okay you can sit on the back row and you can hide why because it's convenient it's cheap and it's easy nobody bothered me nobody messed with me I went in checked it off and left and somewhere along the way God in his mercy and his grace reminded me that he is more than that and he has more than that for me. He has more than the Leah's of life for me and he wants me to remind you this morning that he has more than the Leah of life for you. He has more for you than the wild cow. But if you're satisfied, just stay there. If you want to settle, if you want to be a tough guy and let the whole world think because you're so good at faking it and so good at pretending that everything's hunky-dory and that you got it all figured out and knowing all along that it's eat up with termites and you're about to lose your mind and they're about to foreclose on your home and they're about to repo your car and your wife's about to leave you because you're not willing to stand up and own it and stop settling for the status quo and the routine and the mundane and the cheap and the... E My Preaching y'all right? <laughs> ha! Maybe it's just me this morning that needed it. I don't want to just settle in. I don't want the easy of life. I don't want the cheap of life. I don't want those things. Here he was not willing to settle. Jacob said, I love it, man. He said, all right. I'll work. Now, we know story is he didn't have to work the complete seven years. Really, a week later, he gets Rachel. But the, but the mindset up front, he didn't know that. He didn't know that. He's like, oh, my Lord, seven years, and I'm already hitched up to a wild cow, and you want seven more years out of me? He looked at, I believe he might have looked at Rachel again and go, yeah, she is that good looking. Okay, all right, all right. I don't know. I don't know. But I got I to gotta believe because they were everyday men just like us, guys. I got I to gotta think for a second. He probably paused and was like. <laughs> Jacob didn't settle. Now, did he mess up? Yes, he messed up. Had he messed up prior to this? Yes, he messed up. Will he mess up after this? Yes, we know the story. We live on this side of history. We understand that. The point being this morning is he was not willing to settle. And, and man, it challenged me to the core of who I am to get up, to move, to not just settle in, to not just say, I, I'm good. And we, we I, I mean, across the board, we pulled into our home last night. God, thank you for our home and being able to make the payments on that thing and all the good stuff that God has blessed us with. And it's nothing spectacular. It's just, it's our castle and it's the 107 and it, it's our, well, it's actually the bank's, but it'll be ours one day. And, uh, and so we pulled in and we said, man, we, I, we have a nice little spread here. 
And so it's easy. I don't want you to think that I'm up here on this platform and I've, I'm like this super spiritual and I've got, if you read the post that Joan wrote about me this morning, she's very true. I've got nothing to hide. I, it's not that I don't think that I have nice things and, I've, and I'm, I'm good with what we have. I just don't want to settle in my spirit, man. I don't want to ever become just routine. I've told you this for the last three weeks. I don't want to just settle in. I don't want to just fill a building up or somewhat fill a building up or somewhat have a full children's ministry and have paid staff and, and be able to pay our bills and, and, and have a little surplus and, and be dreaming about buying land. And build. I, don't, I don't want to just settle into those things. I don't want to just settle in for the average. I don't want to just settle in for that which is easy. It's easy just to show up, man. It's easy. He challenged me to my core. He said, hey, okay, Laban, I'll go to work. You say work around some folks, man, they cringe. But what? What? Ha! What? And listen, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, that you have to have a back-breaking job for it to be work, or that because you get blisters on your hands, you're out there working with you. I'm not suggesting that. Thank God for education. Thank God that you have the office job. Just thank God for all the things that you get to do, whether it's dig a ditch or, or, or run a five-star corporation. It doesn't make any difference to, to God or to me as far as that concerns, and I'm not on the plane of God, but I'm just suggesting that this is no respecter of that. But in any situation from the lowest to the highest, if you're not careful, you'll just settle in because it becomes convenient. It becomes, and listen, I'm not knocking anybody. You, I'm going to be real. Is it Okay. We moved from the warehouse to this building, I believe, on my little 1997 Nissan, I won't tell you my nickname for it, but my little truck, <laughs> that on the odometer, it's four point, maybe 4.5 miles, maybe 4.3 miles from that place to here. Did you know that some folks said they, that, and, I, and I respect this and don't think I'm talking bad about them, but said, listen, you, you, it's, it's really you've moved too far. We drive, I'm not kidding you, I'm not joking you. Do you know that we've heard folks say, listen, we've just recently, he, he's too loud. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> Chad, how prophetic this morning to post. <laughs> how prophetic. I don't want to just settle. And the reason we moved is because you nuts kept showing up. <laughs> And the reason I'm loud and the reason I'm passionate, well, you just have to take that up with God. I can't help it, but I believe everything I'm saying. I believe everything. I believe every stinking word. I believe it from the core of my very being. I believe God has told me, hey, you good. You're drawing a paycheck now. Church is getting full. Hey, they're baptizing every month. Just settle in, son. Let it coast. Let them do what they do. Just step back. Don't worry about pushing any harder. It's all good. That's not who we are. That's not what God calls us to do. He said, I'll work seven more years because she's my dream. It's everything I've ever wanted right out there. And some of you sold out and settled in to the mundane and the average because it was cheap, convenient, and easy. I'm telling you, our God is greater than that. Sometimes in this life, bless God, you got to burn down, hunker down, get in, and work through the situation. Them boys were rowing across the lake, and Jesus come walk up on the water. They didn't quit. He told them after he stopped the wind in the water. But until he did that, they were doing everything they could to do what God told them to do. And that was to get to the other side. You keep going, my friend. You keep going. He didn't settle. He didn't settle. Let me give you point number two. Before I spent a whole hour right there. Jacob didn't settle for Leah. Jacob sacrificed for Rachel. Leah means wild what? If you remember anything today, you're going to say, that preacher called her a cow. <laughs> I know you folks, or you saw some hunk on the TV screen. I know how it is. All right? I know how it is. <laughs> Leah means wild cow. Rachel, I love this. It literally means in the Hebrew, Lamb of God. When we talk about that, it's not a reference to Christ in the Lamb of God but in the innocence and the loveliness of a small lamb. You with me? Can you see the comparison? Wild cow, beautiful, lovely, docile, pure, innocent lamb. You're following me, right? Cross-eyed Leah, you know, <laughs> smoking hot, rocking bod. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm just using what <laughs> that God goes through. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> 
I don't know, but it, 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 it had to be good looking. I mean, seven years, willing to work 14. I'm just saying. I'm just seeing if you're listening. I'll get the emails on that one. It don't matter, you body. I know. That's not the point I'm trying to make here. <laughs> Jacob was willing to sacrifice. Some of you have no idea what it means to sacrifice. You say, that's ugly to say. I'm not trying to be ugly. <laughs> I am being honest. Especially our young folks. I, and listen, I'm guilty as everybody in this building. If you're willing to admit it, I'm willing to admit it. I spoil Addie rotten. I, I, I want her to have things I did not have. I want it to be nice. I want more for her. And God's beginning to break me down and, 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 and begin to show me that it's not about those name brands. It's not about how. Because I'm telling you, if you see my daughter out, <laughs> if she's matching, that's because I made her dress that way. She has the most unique punky Brewster. I'm dating myself. I don't know modern. I mean, she has the most punky Brewster style. She, it, nothing will match. It'll be neon. One hair piece will be up this way. I mean, it's just funky, funky. She'll be wearing a shark tooth like she is today with a nice, I mean, she's just got her own style. And I love that. I love that. I hope to God she never tries to fit in a mold of being something or someone she is not. She, she, she like anybody else, she doesn't really know what it means to sacrifice. She will in her lifetime if God tarries, because all of us will go through great travail. All of us will go through trials. And what I want to challenge you, what makes us real macho men is not how much we can bench press. It's not, it's, not, it's, <laughs> it's not how smart we are. It's not how much money we have. It's not how good looking our wives are or the third wife or whatever it is, whatever phase that you're going through. God bless you. It's not those things. It's not about what you can provide for your kids. It's not about those things. It's about living a life of leadership, guy. It's about saying, I'm not willing to settle. I'm not willing to settle here. I, I've ended up here, and it's bad. I woke up one morning. I'm being honest with you. I woke up one morning, and I was like, did this really happen? Did it all really come crumbling down around me? I mean, I was the next thing, man. What, I, mean, what, I mean, what did I do wrong? God, did it really all just come? And if you hadn't been there, you will be there. And your family member will call you, and they'll be sideways. You're going, now, wait a minute. I thought they were doing well. I, I believed in them. I supported them. And, and yet they screw up again. Screw works either way up in the Hebrew or the Greek. You can translate that either way. I think you all know what it means. And so you will go through tragedy. You will go through cutbacks. You will go through being laid off. You will go through loss. You pray for Jason Barnes. JB's a good friend of mine. Good friend of this ministry. Help me with, other, with some other guys on my back porch when I seem to have nobody else in the world. Gets a call. Something's wrong with your dad. Just like that, gone into eternity. You will go through valleys. You will go through the issues of life. And it will give you the opportunity to settle and take the easy route, the convenient route. And it will get the cheap route. It will give you opportunities to do that. But if you will be like Jacob and be a macho man, if you will be a strong man or woman of God, and you are willing to sacrifice like he was, God will give you the desires of your heart. Let me explain to you what Rachel represents. Leah represents the convenient, the cheap, and the easy. Rachel, she, she is that which is our dream. Man, you ever had a dream? I'm talking about like Martin Luther King Jr. I'm not talking about that. I'm not knocking that either, but I'm talking about that. I'm talking about the day he saved you and set you free, and you, you were so giddy and so innocent and everything around you. It didn't matter what and who. Man, I had one of my best friends over at the house yesterday, and we were talking about how we, we well, our BC days, <laughs> how we used to get sideways together. And then, and then our, our, our adventures in life took us far apart and then brought us back together. And we met, of all places, in Blockbuster. Y'all remember Blockbuster used to be here in Applewood? And we met, it, we just happened to be in there. He's a, he's a, he's a movie geek, and, and so he was in there. I, I, I was just in there hanging out. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and he, he was telling me yesterday, he was reminding me, he goes, I looked over, I saw you, Joel, I've seen you forever. He said, I, I know this is what he said, he said, and you look so clean. <laughs> I must have looked real dirty before. I don't know. <laughs> I did bathe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Here's what he said. It's Rodriguez. He said, you, you look so clean. And, and, uh, and I looked, and of course, I saw him. And, uh, and this is what was funny about the conversation is we both were probably thinking the same thing. I wonder, does he know Jesus? I'm going to tell him about Jesus. And both of us have been saved unbeknownst to each other at the time. 
You remember that time in your life when he saved you and set you free and put you on fire, just set you on fire, and he put a dream in you. You're going to do this, and you're going to go there, and you're going to win everybody, and you're going to be a missionary, and you're going to build this, and you're going to do that. And, and somewhere along the way, in the seven-year process, you begin to settle. You begin to go for the cheap. You begin to go for the convenient. You begin to buy into the easy of this world. And every time you've done it thus far on your journey, you've got nothing back in return. And so you are disgusted with religion. You are disgusted with a yelling preacher. You you're disgusted with a small church. You're disgusted with a large church. You're disgusted with a loud church. And on and on the excuses go. Why? Because you've settled for the leaders of this world. Right. The fat cows. And not. And I know this wild. <coughs> Shaft <Shabby> large. <laughs> God don't make no mistakes. How can we go call somebody a cow? I'm just saying. Stay with me. I will give you 
you the desires of your heart. And a week later, Rachel was his. When you love something, you realize it's worth the wait. Amen, young ladies? If they love you, they will wait. And I don't want to be cheesy and all that, you know what I'm saying? It's overdrawn. No, nah, just put it on lockdown. Like my dear said, just lock down. Just lock down. <laughs> Guys, macho men, macho men. If you love someone or something, you will wait. You will wait. So, Jacob. I, I want to build a building now. I, want you to, I don't want you to think I'm preaching down to you. I'm preaching my heart. I, I, I <laughs> Sometimes God says, wait. One step at a time. A sacrifice. I don't want to wait. I want to go through the drive through at McDonald's and I want a chicken nugget. Now. <laughs> now. I'm not going to raise a chicken up, oh, bucket, and all that stuff. I want a nugget now. Still ain't figuring out what a nugget is, but that's a whole nother message. <laughs> You are nuts. <laughs> you see, he wasn't willing to sell what made him a macho man in my eyes and according to the scripture. And yes, he was a screw up. Yes, he made a mess of things. Yes, he was a deceiver and got deceived. Yes, he would mess up again. Yes, all those things. But in this moment, he screams at us, don't settle for the lazy cow. Don't settle for the fat. Don't settle for the wild. Don't settle for the convenient cow. Don't settle for the easy. Hey, sacrifice. Press in. Get desperate. Know that you don't have anything outside of God. And when you get down there, it is amazing. It is amazing. He'll begin to give you the desires of your heart. It is amazing. When you love something, you begin to realize it's worth the wait. You begin to realize that it is worth working for. Sacrifice is but a small thing when you love it. I love to read my Bible. I love to pray. I love to give. I, I don't, when it comes time to give, I don't worry. I don't fret over it. I don't stress over it. I will be transparent with you. I keep money with me. I keep money, not because I'm rich. I'm blessed and highly favored, and I claim that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right? You call me a big hair channel or not. I'm not wearing hairs. I'm just telling you, okay? I keep money on me all the time, and I'm always asking God, even this morning, who do you want me to give this to? You say, is that your tithe? It's got nothing to do with my tithe. I understand the concept to have nothing. And I understand and begin to know better what it means in my nothingness to still give. Because in my nothingness, in my desperation, I love God so much that I'm willing to sacrifice even if it hurts. And the most amazing thing happens. <laughs> Somebody is carrying around a dollar in their pocket with the same attitude and they end up giving me that dollar. How about them apples? Right. Or I'll get a call and say, hey man, will you help me with a tree? Be there Monday morning. And I will bust my home and do everything I can. Keep my phone on me to hear from you, pastor you. And work those bushes. Do you understand? Sacrifice. 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 He said, I'll work seven more years. What else you got for me, dude? I love her. She's my dream. She's my desire. And I'm desperate for her. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes in the name of Jesus. You follow me? Because when you love someone, <laughs> it's only a short time. I tell you, I, I love Sandy like there's no tomorrow. Y'all know my story, and I'm not going to bring it up every time I turn around, but I, I tell you one thing that I, I boy, I, and I tried everything under the sun. I tried to talk her into all kinds of sideways, just going, girl, come on, let's just, let's, let's, let's just go up there and get hitched. We'll just stand in front of the judge. I, I could not, I could, it couldn't get here quick enough for her to be my wife and for it to be legit and be right what God had put together. I understand. I, 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 I want so much for you, so much for the community. I understand the fact of being impatient. I'm not willing to settle. Some of you are settled into a relationship that's headed south. It's been bad. It'll always be bad. Hey, when are you going to wise up? When are you going to make right decisions? When are you going to choose? I've told you this week after week. You don't need everybody on your boat. Right. Not everybody's supposed to be on your boat. Jonah, I cannot wait to preach through Jonah, a little book in Old Testament. He was not supposed to be on that boat. Some of you have got people in your boat, 
in your friend on your friends list which you need to delete Amen. that you don't need. Amen. You're settling and not sacrificing for what God's greatness is. <laughs> Bring it on. Because when you love something, you'll love to pray, love to give, love to serve. It won't be a struggle. It won't be a strain. It won't be no competition. Thank God we don't have that. Thank God people to show up love. It starts with a dream. Now listen to me. I'm going to close with this. I promise y'all. I'll wind down here if I don't get wound up. Rachel. It starts with a dream. Rachel. Rachel was his dream. Now, I don't want you to stay in the physical realm. Okay, I was silly and I tried to be funny and, and, and keep you engaged. I'm talking about a dream that God has put in here. For you. For your family. For your children. It starts with that dream. It takes a desire. You gotta want it. You gotta want it. And I, I, here's the thing: it's just like I've told people around me. I can't want it for you. You know what I mean? I can't. I can fan the flame. I can do all I can. I can lead you there. I can tell you about it. I can't. I can't want it for you. You have to want it. You have. It has to be your dream. You have to quit settling on your own. You have to want it. You have to get de desperate. You have to get to a place where. You're willing to do whatever it takes in the compound of God's will to achieve that dream he's got out there before you, no matter how long it takes or how hard it is to get there. I desire that. It's amazing what we'll do when we really want something. You all right? Amen. When you love something, you realize someone loves you back like that, it's but a short while. It doesn't seem like a chore. It doesn't seem difficult. It starts with that dream. It starts with a desire. It takes us getting desperate. But ultimately, ultimately, you listening? You have to decide. You have to decide. God cannot decide for you. Do you know that? He can't make that decision for you. Does he know that decision already? Sure, he's sovereign. He knows everything. You have to make the decision. You have to today and every day thus far. And I mean every day. You can't just today and say, okay, rest of my life, I'm good. No, every day. Every day is a new day, Lord. Every day is a day of salvation. Do I got to get saved every day? No, get your doctrine straight. But every day I've got to get up and I've got to, I've got to decide I will let nothing distract me, detour me, divide me, or discourage me in the pursuit of the God-given dream, the God-given desire, the desperate hunger I have for God, I will let nothing get in my way. That's a decision you have to make. You have to decide, I want a God-honoring marriage. I don't want to settle for the leader. I don't want to settle for the convenient, the average, and being glorified roommates. Now, listen, I'm not talking about cow versus lamb here. All right? Get outside the silliness. I want you to understand. Some of you have settled in. And you think no one or nothing. It'll never be. You've got to make a decision that you're tired of the same old, same old. You've got to make a decision today that there is something greater. And I want to tell you this morning, there is something greater. His name is Jesus. Amen. I want you to understand that you can't water it down. You can't think it away. You can't sidestep it. You can ignore it. You can try your best. But he will continue to remind you that he is God. And he will always be God. And that he loves you with an everlasting love. And all he desires is for you to decide, I'm going to sell out. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I will sacrifice and I will stop selling. Hey, it's your decision to stop settling for the dream. It's your decision to stop settling for the drugs. It's your decision to stop settling for the easy women. It's your decision to stop settling for the easy men. It's your decision to stop settling for the easy pornography, the easy fix, the quick fix. It's your decision to settle for the easy religion. It's your decision. You have to make it. I cannot make it for you. He said, I'll work you seven more years. The choice is yours. You want to be tough? I mean, really, what is defined? Stop settling. And above everything, let me say it again. Listen to me. Listen to me still. Stop sacrificing your dream. Start the day fresh and new sacrifice for 
before your feet. Stand your feet. Every day about every eye closed. Father, we love you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for the Jacobs of the Bible. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the dream that you put in our heart. Thank you for the fire you put in our bones. Thank you, God, for the seemingly unquenchable thirst we have for you, God. Father, I pray today that there will be folks that will decide today, flat-footed, chest out, boldly in the face of great opposition and sacrifice, I choose God. I choose God's way over what is easy, fast, and convenient. Today, I pray that you life. Today, I pray, God, they're willing to sacrifice all the things that you want to get rid of in their life so that they can live a life that's glorifying and honoring to you. May our children see that in our lives. May our community see that in our lives. May they not see one thing in this house and another thing outside of you, God. May we be consistent in the way we walk. None of us are perfect. None of us are legalistic, God. We want to be ruled by grace and mercy. But God, we want to live sold out for you. I pray that you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. They're going to start playing and singing. You know, you know, it can be routine if you want it to be. We just go through the motion. Nobody moves. And they'll say a few more things, sing a little bit, we'll get out of here. That's your choice. And I'm not criticizing you for that. But if you desire more, if you want more, I want you to know that we have somewhat of an old-fashioned altar here. It's just plain carpet, a lot of concrete, a little bit of wood. So there's been some crazy folks pray over it, anoint it holy ground. I've seen for the last weeks people cry over it. This span of area here, I've watched people be delivered. I've watched healing take place. I've watched salvation, which is the greatest healing and miracle this side of heaven. I've watched all that take place. I've saw households restored. I'm just saying to you, if you want more, today is the day. We want you to come. Whatever the need may be, we'll make room for you. Please come. Who'll be first? That?